This is such a beautiful song, powerful song. This is Johnny Cash's version of Hurt, uh, originally by Nine Inch Nails. It's gorgeous um, and surprisingly easy to play too. Uh, check it out, main riff is this guy. We'll go through it slowly, but just a second. A minor, C, B, A minor. There's a bunch of those. And the cool thing in the uh, in the chorus, there's something called a common tone. I'll, stick, I'll put an A minor with a pinky right here. I call it piano strum. Then to an F major, or F add nine. Pinky stayed. It's easier than an F, because you don't have to bar. C, keep the pinky where he is. My sweetest G friend. Repeat that A minor. Everyone I know goes away. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's so beautiful, haunting, and uh, really kind of wide open on the recording. I love what they did with that. They didn't clutter it up with too many instruments. Um, so that is Johnny Cash's rendition of Hurt. And we'll go through it all very slowly. Only two parts, as I just said. You got that versy part. <laughs> Easy chords and a simple little picking pattern. So grab your pick. Um, it's not finger picked, or you could finger pick it, but I'm choosing to, because there's strums involved, I'm using a pick. Um, and hey, I'll send you to, thanks for coming back. Wait, let me get this right. Thanks for coming back. All your thumbs up have met the world. Comments, suggestions, even some of your complaints um, really have meant a lot to me. And the thumbs up are everything. And uh, a lot of your suggestions have been great. Um, I'll send you to patreon.com slash guitar work. As always, the three pages for you on this guy. Uh, you got a song sheet and then two detail sheets also i've uh, been getting great feedback on the lead stuff i've been putting at the end of the video so we'll do we'll do the melody um it's a really important i'm always searching for songs it's very easy to give you scale stuff uh give you scale stuff and you get faster smoother better and all that but to find a good melody a good hook to work on your expression this is ideal so we're trying to emulate a vocalist uh, most instruments are trying to emulate the human voice. They say the violin comes closest, but it's really, we can't get the kind of expression that a singer gets. We can get pretty darn close, uh, but it's something to strive for. So instead of a million licks and tricks, two very simple phrases at the end, we'll play along with the looper. And uh, just to get some vocabulary within the scale, I think you're gonna know the scale already if you've done a couple of videos with me. And uh, uh, just some vocabulary within, and expression, slides, hammers, uh, vibrato, things like that, things that make it come alive. So do those. So head to patreon.com slash guitar work. Grab those sheets. Now remember, Patreon does not have to be a lifelong commitment. There's so many songs up there. Go grab them. There's a ton of play along stuff up there. We communicate there. We had a great community going on. So many of you are doing that, which is really amazing to me. Just amazing. Thanks for that. So patreon.com slash guitar work. Grab your sheets. I'll be referring to those the whole time. We'll be using there's no drums in this song, but we're still going to use the beat buddy. I'll use it for a metronome uh, to keep us honest. And um, I always say it's way more fun than a metronome, but guess what? It can actually work as a metronome as well. The song is, is again stripped right down. There's no drums. And at the end, we'll invoke the aerial looper, but I'll put the beat buddy on later to keep us together. We'll do a slow play along about half the song at first, and then we'll do a full speed play along. So just jumping right in. Here's an A minor. <laughs> This is your intro. You're seeing that on the top of the page there. A minor, the shape is easy for you. Now, what's going on the right hand? I'm looking at the detail sheet. Uh, you're seeing the chord shapes first, and then the third line in, you're seeing what to do. Intro, you're seeing two dots. Here's your A string, your D string, and now strum. Strum the remaining strings, meaning strum the top three, thinnest three. That way the bass notes remain kind of separate. There won't be anything to tell you that on sheets, but uh, it's just a good, good practice. That's a down stroke. Okay, that's your first part. Now go to the C chord, only one finger moves. And we're going to a C. Strum it. And return. Now it goes to D. When does it go to D? Uh, there's four attacks in that bar on the C. I'm gonna go one and two. And now you switch to the D. Now the arrow on the sheet, the arrow, the up arrow on the sheet is a strum, okay? When you see that squiggly arrow, uh, an up arrow is a down strum. Now that might drive you crazy, but remember, the guitar is kind of upside down on paper. The thickest string is the bottom line. Remember that, the thickest string is the bottom line. Otherwise, you'd be playing everything upside down and backwards. No good. So here's the top, the intro, which is, which is basically the verse in a different order, A minor. <laughs> Four is a pause there, going to a C. A string, D string, strum, back to the A string. Now to a D, strum it. It says repeat, go back to your A minor. So two beat rest, three, four, going to a C. Wow. 
last time. Three, four, C, D, A minor. Good, now the verse is exactly the same. He starts singing on the C. So it's really the same idea, but the vocal starts on the C, uh, which is a, I thought was a really neat idea. So here's a C chord. This is your verse section, same stuff. C and your A string, sorry, to a D string, strum, back to the A string, and use your D, A minor, three, four, back to your C, I heard my D self, A minor, today, three, four, C, minor. That's it. Um, there's your verse and your intro. Uh, that was the toughest part. Now um, about right hand stuff. Um, I see lots of different ways to play the guitar. Lots of people play in different ways. Some people rest their pinky to try to get some sort of anchor so you don't miss so many strings. I like to rest what I'll call the heel of my hand here uh, on those pins right there. You know, sort of the ones closest to me. I don't rest far enough up that I get a, a mute unless I want that. So back it off. And something usually will come off for the strum. A flick of the wrist and then find that happy place again. That's it. Uh, you're going to miss the odd string like all of us. Uh, you may have to look for a little while. But if you rest in the same spot every time, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't have to look for too long. And it won't matter if you're sitting or standing or whatever, laying down or whatever you're doing. Um, the the chorusy bit, the chorus very very important here. Uh, the chorus chords you're seeing in the second line, A minor seven. Now it's called a common tone, and it's a beautiful idea. You see it in a lot of different songs. The top note of every chord remains the same. Okay, your ear goes to the top note no matter what. Our ear is trained to go to the top note of a chord, like a fish to a shiny object. Okay, and it really helps to smooth the chord changes over uh, a huge gorgeous sound. So here's an A minor. If I add a pinky to the third fret of that high E, it's called A minor seven. <laughs> We'll get to the strum in a sec. And now F add nine, sounds like a scary name. I'm gonna leave the pinky where he is. I'm gonna switch these two right here to that. There's your F shape. Now it's not like a normal F where you have to bar. You may have been struggling with that. Good news for you, it's easier. You stand him up and put your pinky, oh, sorry, he stays from where he was on the A minor seven. That's an F, F add nine. Uh, C5, I hate the name of that chord, but I wanted to distinguish it from a regular C. All I'm doing is taking these two guys, ring and middle, and moving them over one thicker. There's C, the pinky has stayed where he was. Same high note. Now I'm playing my G this way, same high note. Um, I call that the big kid's G. If that is new to you, or you've been struggling with it, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Even with the length of my fingers, I found it difficult to separate the ring and pinky at first. I was so used to this guy. Uh, that I just I couldn't pro reprogram my brain. But sometimes you need this guy, or whoever you might be fingering a G, and sometimes you need the big kid's G, okay? So it's worth chasing. That's the one there. Uh, but if you need to go back to your old G uh, to get through the song with me today, that's fine too. And just a mental note, that's something you might want to check out. Um, so those chords again, A minor seven, this is your chorus, you bet. F add nine, C5, I'll call it. And here's your G, big kid's G. Now, there's beautiful tension in the chorus, and I call this the piano strum. It's one of my favorite ways to strum. Uh, you play a chord first, strum it first, and then play the bass note. The bass note is determined by how many X's are in the chord. You'll notice on the A minor seven, there's one X on the low E, so you don't hit that low E. So the bass, low avail lowest available note is your A string, your second thickest. So I'll strum, uh, strum, bass, strum, bass, strum. Your body might want to do the opposite. It might want to go bass drum, bass drum, but therein lies the tension, okay? So it's one and two and three and four and now F add nine, your bass note changes to the D string, third thickest string. One and two and three and four. Small detail, but a good one. I'm not strumming the bass note after I've plucked it. So I'm strumming from the string just above whatever bass note you're choosing. Okay, that keeps the bass note sounding separate. In other words, here's a C. I'll strum it from the D string onward, which isolates my A string. Sounds separate. Now to your G, I'm strumming it from the D string in this case. So without, uh, without any blabbing, here's A minor seven, one. One 
course that A minor to 7 Tension H just mounting and mounting and they're building there. It's gorgeous. Um, so that is the song. That's it. That's it. That's all. So you got a verse, a chorus, a verse, and a chorus. Um, that chorusy strum, the piano strum, it begins. Um, it begins at the end of the verse. Okay, just before it goes into the chorus, the last chord before the chorus is a G every time. Last chord before the chorus is a G, and that's where you start. And he's a doing what have I become? Yeah, that's awesome. You should be able to do a little bit of that. Here's the slow play along. It comes in at 90 beats per minute. 90 beats per minute. And how do I know that? Um, if I listen to the song while it's playing, there's a tap button. You'll clearly see on the beat button, it says tap. And while you're listening to the song, tap that button as if you were tapping your foot, and it will figure out the how many beats per minute for you. It'll keep shifting a little bit, like 90, 90, or 89, 92, because you're human, right? And but you'll be close, right? You'll be close like anybody else. Um, so that's really handy. It's called Tap Tempo. It's on the on your beat buddy on the on the uh, full version. I don't know if it's on the other. Sorry. Now get this. Uh, we're at 90 beats per minute. I will easily dial that down to 70. I'll take 20 points off as we often do. It's going to be very very slow. We walk in with in quicksand, but uh, it's good for us. I'll do a ver intro, verse, and chorus. Okay. So go grab those sheets. Patreon.com/slash guitar at work. Gladly affiliate the the beat buddy. Uh, it's a wonderful device. It's so it's so fun, and I have the air, plugged into the Aeros Looper from Singular Sound. Uh, proudly affiliated. All the links are in the description below. Use promo code GAW10. You get 10% off at checkout. It helps to support the channel. Much appreciated. That's my infomercial. So here's our. That's just a metronome setting. You just literally turn that knob. This is metronome, and press yes. Easy to find. So here's your intro. One. Sorry. One, two, three. A minor. Four and. C, D, A minor, C to D, verse, C to D, I heard my D self today, A minor, C to D, to C, I still, A minor, feel, C to D, focus, to kill it, D, all A minor, away, C to D, now I remember, D, piano strum G, everything, chorus, A minor 7, what if I, F5 9, become C5, my sweetest G, friend, A minor 7, every F add nine, I know. C5 goes away. G coming in the end. A minor seven, and you could. F major, F add nine, sort of it all. G, my two Gs, my empire. Dirt. A minor seven, I will. F add nine, let you down. Back to the intro. Third. C to D. D. A minor, etc. Okay, you sh hey, guys, you should be able to do that before we go to the full speed play along right now. I'll bring it back up to 90 beats a minute. Easy as doing this. Do, 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 90. Um, remember, I keep saying it, uh, whether it's a slow version or the full speed version, uh, reco recovery skills, right? Play alongs like this. The best thing for you is recovery skills. You miss something. Don't start again. Wait, wait for the next C or wait for the next A minor, wherever you can jump back in. That way you're you're learning how to parachute in, right? If something goes wrong, because things do go wrong here and there. 
and uh, sometimes it's how well you cover them up okay seriously when you have a whole bunch of songs in your repertoire you're gonna miss things for sure I notice I've written F major 7 when it should say F add 9 in one of those so watch it it's always F add 9 in this song Okay, um, so 90 beats from that. Go grab your sheets, patreon.com slash guitar at work. Go grab a bunch of songs there. We can talk, and I will just count us in. We're at 90 beats a minute, and here's your full-length play along, guys. What? Intro, three, A minor. C to D. resolve away he sings away and the chord really wants to be a my away but he don't do it they leave it up in the air spooky 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 so if it feels unresolved and you want to resolve it go to a name oh but they don't they stay on the G which is really eerie I hope you did okay with that I know it was fast I had a little bump in there somewhere but that's okay we all do uh, way to go way to go way to go and for those of you uh, I recommend if you struggle with that um, you know go round and round and round on it go round and round and round it's a hard, it's a good one to sing but it's really low eh, to get that rich voice uh, so you if you're you bring it up the octave whatever suits you uh, the scale you've seen this before if you're looking to do more lead stuff and again I was talking about the expression important very bottom of page one of your detail sheet you're gonna see this scale yet again a pentatonic minor fifth fret eighth fret five seven five seven five seven five eight five 
five, eight. I think most would agree that is your most basic scale, A pentatonic minor, big scary name, pentatonic five note scale. Uh, if it repeats, that's why there's more than five notes. And go backwards, eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five. If you don't know that, take a moment, stop tape, take a moment, get to know it. It's important to know the scale shape that this melody is being derived from. There's an extension. At the end of that line, you'll see I've written extension. At the same scale in a different location, I'm going to go seven on the G string, nine on the G string, and tuck under. You've seen this before, probably up to the eighth fret, B string, tenth fret, B string, eighth fret, high E, tenth fret, high E, and backwards, ten, eight, ten, eight, nine, seven, which will connect seven to the other part of the scale. That he's using well. He's singing, of course, but I've, I've broken up the verse into two phrases, okay? Two melodic phrases. Uh, we'll get the looper going here in a sec so we can play along. Uh, the first phrase starts. So it's, I hurt myself today. Um, and notice it ends on an up. And then the second phrase is. And then. So here's the first phrase, second part of it, that was the whole phrase one. Let's do that again. All of phrase one here, and okay, so you're seeing those numbers, I'm sure you can read those the numbers that are circled underneath, those are left hand fingering suggestions. Pretty, pretty standard stuff there. Uh, now, as for the slide here, phrase one. I'm going to play the seven. Again, if that's your first attempt at a slide, you decide how much pressure you got to keep on. If too much pressure, you get drag and it won't slide very well. How much pressure do you have to put so the note sustains, but you're able to drag, uh, drag them up? That might take some bit of experimenting. Uh, the second part of number one. Same slide. So once you have it in the first part, you'll have it in that second part. Phrase number two is this guy. Starts the very same way, so it's really just the tail end to be you have to learn. Second phrase, second half. This hammer is just to give it a little bit of expression. It's not a, a hammer that has rhythmic value, it's not hammers can be that as well, but in this case it's like a sax player would do. The vocalist has all this ability to. A vocalist can play in between the frets. We cannot unless we're bending or simulating things like that. Uh, so phrases one and two back to back, and we'll get the blooper going here in a sec. Phrase one. Phrase number two. Ends on an up, phrase one, ends on a down, phrase two. That's really common sort of bluesy phrasing, right? Um, the the Aero Slooper, my favorite thing in the world, the Beat Buddy and the Aero Slooper. Um, check it out. Uh, again, links are in the description below. I'm going to go like this, press Loop Studio, and it boots up. This is a, now I've got a free spot here. I love the big graphic screen. Uh, it's very easy to, to follow along. It's hard to get lost, actually. What's going to happen when I press go on the beat buddy is it's going to count to four and then the looper will start recording. So I'll record uh, C, D, A minor, just like a verb scale. I'll record that a couple of times and then I'll play the lead over top. So here it comes. One, two, three, four. A minor. Do another one here. Go around again. Phrase number one, two, three. Phrase two. Another time. Phrase one. Phrase 
phrase two. Okay, so remember, as I said earlier in the intro, that um, it's all about expression. There's nothing really fancy or speedy about that, but uh, it's a good melody and um, so important to learn expression. Sometimes we always want to be burn, burning around, you know, um, which is about, sure, that's cool. Um, but so much expression in that, I'd highly recommend it. Um, it's like, for me, I never feel like I can get that right. I'm always going to play it differently each time, maybe a different vibrato, like, or whatever it might be. You know, the slide might be different, the hammer might be different. And you put your own personality in there, for sure. So that, again, was the Beat Buddy uh, with the Eros Looper from Singular Sound. Absolutely love these. I've been affiliated with them for over two years now, but I've been using their stuff for, I think, six or seven years, long before I met up with them. And I just love them. They're always going. Uh, that is the Beat Buddy and the Aero Slooper, the gold version there with a the nice silent button. It's incredible. You can get one of these devices. You get them both. They talk to each other. Just Beat Buddy plugs into the Aeros and tells it what to do. It's fantastic. Love it. So uh, go grab one of those. Again, all the links are in the description below. Again, patreon.com slash guitar at work. A whole bunch of songs up there. Go grab those. We'll do a bunch of play-alongs together. Uh, keep your comments, suggestions coming, guys, and sometimes even your complaints. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming back. Uh, am I forgetting anything? Thumbs up mean the world. Okay, that's huge in YouTube. Thumbs up mean the world. So, uh, and comments as well. So thanks for that. And uh, we'll see you again soon.